Hey guys, uh, on this animation video on how to animate your PowerPoints, uh, I need to give a uh, caution here, uh, could be dangerous, uh, because animations have to be used very, very carefully because they are such a strong element, especially if you add sound to them. We have all set through animations, or excuse me, PowerPoints with animations, where it seems like that the presenter suddenly discovered that PowerPoint had animations and sound and so tried to use every one of them during the presentation. And that is a real killer. Uh, animation has to be viewed this way, that it must serve a purpose, a genuine purpose that somehow augments, clarifies, uh, and helps communicate what you're trying to do in that PowerPoint. And the, then the animation must be tested against that purpose as to whether or not it truly achieved that purpose. If it achieved the purpose, 80 to 90 percent, keep it. If it didn't achieve the purpose, bag it, because it will ruin your PowerPoint. Unless these animations are done well with purpose, they will ruin you, your reputation as a presenter, and your PowerPoint. So, caveat, caution, caution, danger zone, uh, whatever you want to uh, call it. So here comes the knowledge. Please, please use it wisely. Here's a little bit of brief background on this PowerPoint and its audience. Its audience was a group of teachers required to attend this Q2 faculty in service. Now, you know what it's like to be required to attend something. So what I wanted to do was to first open up with uh, something that would really get their attention, establish a sense of fun, and say, hey, this is not your usual boring faculty in service training workshop that you have to attend. And then uh, after that, the usual purposes uh, to present my information in a visual way, clear way that could be assimilated and used very easily and very quickly. So with that as background, what I'll do is uh, play a portion of this uh, PowerPoint and then uh, we'll stop and I'll uh, open up PowerPoint and uh, show you how the different effects were achieved. Okay, let's get started. Not only is it a gas, and not only is it free. Now, as you read on the last screen, Flash Paper allows you to share any document by converting it into Flash SWF file format. Well, at least that's what the promotional blurb says. The truth is not very far from that advertising statement. Flash Paper cannot convert any file. But flash paper can convert any printable file. In other words, if you can print it, you can flash paper it. And that makes flash paper similar to Adobe PDF. And indeed, both use a similar postscripting process. So what, you ask? Now that's a reasonable question. And I group the answer to it into three parts. First, reduction in file size which, second, reduces the time required to upload documents into the Connect Classroom, 
or as attachments to your instructor files area on the course homepage. And third, the increase in the range of documents that you now have access to in the Connect Classroom without having to go to screen sharing. 